snow plow side by side. Let's take them out front and glue them together. Why not? So I picked up a dirt cheap plow at the end of last winter. Um, somebody had pulled it off their side by side that they didn't want. You know, they bought a side by side with it, so they took it off. Uh, I've installed quite a few snow plows on riding mowers and four wheelers and stuff like that. They're pretty simple, um, but thought I'd take you guys along. Um, you just got a mount, a mount under the frame. We've got to weld two things. And this one just has a winch. Uh, usually on riding mowers and stuff, I like the ones that have a little pull handle, but this one will just use the winch to lift it. And it actually even has a winch that changes left side to right side, which is kind of neat. So this is our hook for our winch to hook up to, and then these just have to bolt back to the frame. We'll have to make little tabs. Um, I did test this out, this does work, but I don't have a, it didn't come with a controller. I think I have a wireless controller that I can hook up to this. And then if you switch polarity. I guess I can take the winch and actually pull it up right now. I guess the easiest way to tell how far back it should go is just turn it all the way one way so it doesn't hit the tire. Gave myself about two inches. Should be enough. And we'll just go back on the frame and see where it lines up. So you can see those little tabs right there. Um, easiest thing to do would just be weld two little tabs on there, put a bolt through, and be done. The problem with that is when they hang down, then when you actually go take this thing riding, off road you're gonna drag those little tabs on everything and it's for sure gonna hold you up on something like a lot of other things that I've done it with I actually want to make a bracket so I want to take a piece like an angle iron you'll see and run it across the entire bottom and then weld two little tabs on for those but then actually put tabs on the top of the angle iron to bolt into the side right here and possibly back to a cross member back here so to take this whole plow off you just remove you know, two bolts, three bolts or something from sideways without crawling under it. And then the entire thing will drop down with this little bracketry and slide out. Directly under it, you guys can't really see. So that's the front of the machine. But the, the main frame for the front end actually comes back here along this line. And I thought it continued all the way back, but it doesn't. That's what these kickers actually do off to the side. And then they kick to the back way out here. So me supporting off this actually supports off the back way better than supporting off here, which is the metal middle of this beam that goes side to side. So that's what we're gonna do. Hey, Ginger, what's up? You got a ball or something for me? Half a ball? You going on a diet? You only eating half a balls now? So I got the plow out of the way, so now you can see um, what I'm doing. So I'm gonna have this angle iron right there, and then we're just gonna support it on top back to these two cross members. Oh yeah, did you tree a squirrel? Good, keep them up there. They're up to no good. So these are gonna actually, I'm gonna drill holes all the way through and bolt these on. I'm just gonna set them here and weld them while I have them here. At least tack them. Okay, so I took the cut off of this angle line right here and it's pushed right back against here. And so this will have bolts through it. And there'll probably be one bolt back through here because all the force is back there. But I need to tie this to this. At first I was just going to extend this back. That's not going to be enough force. Um, the further out I am, the better. Um, I should have actually left this probably a little bit longer, but that's not a big deal. So you can see I have one cardboard template across the bottom. And then I'll have one piece right here that braces off the end of this and off of that. And that'll take all the force. This will just kind of be a 
like holding it up and down, not really any force, but any w force from the plow will push off this and push directly onto this beam right here and spread the load across the entire thing. That goes about right there. And then. Start breaking our tack welds. Okay, I'll just set it right here on the ground out here in the cement and just weld it all up. It's a dinner time. Uh, there's no eating until you're done with work. It's all welded up. And now I'm just gonna make this little bracket. Nothing, no big deal. Just uh, roughly like that. Everything else is out a quarter inch. Um, I do have some 3 8 scrap right here, so we'll see if we can get two brackets. Yeah, looks like I can get two brackets out of there. There you go, half inch hole. So, I tack, tack welded them together so they'd kind of stay. But now I can bust them apart and go throw them on, weld them up. So I got these tabs bolted on there. They're going to be on the outside. So now, it's just a matter of holding this up and tack welding into place, unbolting those and welding them up solid. So this is that plate. This is going to be the bolt plate. So putting nuts individually, but I think that this is only quarter inch steel. It's kind of thin for a bolt to bite into. I mean, it will give you enough, but I think I'd feel a little bit better with a little bit more. So I will probably weld a nut to the back side of this as well. So these are going to bolt. I'm going to send two bolts through these two holes. That hole is just already in there. It means nothing. So, I'm gonna go through and clamp onto that pipe with this. So I just kinda have to hold this back there. Um, Cause I don't think it's thick enough. I'm just gonna throw a nut on the back right now and snug that down and then I'll just put a tack weld. Um, two or three little tack welds on this nut. I can just get that bolt started in there, and then get the other one started. So those three bolts, you should just be able to reach from the side and take it out. I mean, you can see how far it would stick down normally. Um, yeah, it would have been 10 times easier just to weld, you know, these two tabs on there, but they hang down two inches. There's no way around it. Inch and a half. And you're going to hit everything. So from the side, you know, you can just take out three bolts over here, three bolts on the other side. I did tack weld that little um, plate back there. So you just pull these screws out and that'll just stay on the ATV side by side at all times.
We'll have to readjourn in the morning. It's getting a little late. Don't want to piss off the neighbors. What's the temperature? That all seems to work good. Um, now I gotta hook up the left right. It actually didn't come with anything, but I have one of these, um, they salvage all some magic boxes for the wireless remotes. So I will use that to be able to hook up to go left and right. Okay, we got that all wired up. So the little boxes kind of sit there. I did have a plug for it so I can just unplug it and leave the leads to the battery. Think I need more things connected to the battery? Yeah. So, theoretically I should be able to take this and I think you push and hold on. There we go. And then it shouldn't matter which way is left or right. And There's really no stop for this to pull this up into the housing. You can see I've actually put a little dent in there. Nice, that pipe even flexes just a little bit. Okay, we have a problem. That plow was all the way down and it's hitting right there. This was for a much taller machine. So I think they, they actually had tracks on it. So I think they, it might've been, you know, it could have been eight, nine, 10 inches higher underneath. So I think they put that to get a better angle on it. I decided I need to take out that joint that they took. So they just cut a pie out and just bent it up. They didn't even cut the bottom. And so I just sliced it and had it fall on my ankle because my jack stand wasn't pushed over in the right spot. So my bad, but now we can lift it back up and maybe even get it a, a little bit of a tip down, but, and then just, we'll just weld plates or some other thing in there. And if we drop it, it drops it about three inches to do it straight. Get a measure. There you go, jack stand. Keeps it from falling on your ankle. Had these little triangle plates cut off from something else. So just welded those on. There we go, about an inch and a half off the ground. 